and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I'm here talking about the scrapbook.com inks and showing you how amazing these colour families are of how they go pink one, pink two, pink three, pink four. We'll be creating some more tags for our Inktoberfest tag ring. I'm also going to show you how to add colour and variegations to your colour on your stamps using their new adorbers as well. So we've lots of tips and techniques for you so let's get started. This is the tag I created while I was practicing with today's inks. Uh, so they're using those scrapbook.com inks that I showed you the other day and I'm going to be showing you how well they work for these layered stamp sets. So this is the Garden Hydrangea from Ulta New. And I also want to show you one other technique. I'm going to start with that one first of all. So I'm going to use the half tone circles. I'm going to use a tag as we have been the whole way along. And I'm going to pop that into my misty, and I like keeping my corners in my misty because it just—I don't know—it's great if I want to stamp off this side. It just for me gives me a really nice positioning in my uh, stamp tool. And I'm going to move this over so that you can see both halves. And I'm going to get out one of these circles. I really love this set because you can use it for really beautiful, subtle backgrounds. If you just don't want something to be completely white. These are a really great way to go, or you can make them super bright in neons and all sorts of fun things. But what I want to show you today is how you can use one of those new scrapbook.com tools to work with these circles really nicely. So I'm gonna pick out the blues, and these are the blues that I used for this hydrangea. We're gonna to do today's one in pink, just to give you a comparison. And I'm gonna start off with my darkest shade. So they say on them, Sky 1, Sky 2, Sky 3, and Sky 4. They are slightly off the top of the screen, um, but I'm just opening them up. And I put the lid above them so I know which shade is which, and so I put the lids back on the correct pads, like so. And I have my scrapbook.com daubers, and these are stackable daubers. They come in this container and uh, they stack together so really awesome for storage and so i'm going to tape four of them one two three four and my plan is to kind of have a stack for each color family so a stack for pinks a stack for yellows a stack for oranges etc so these are going to be my four and i'm going to put them again with their stamp pads so that i end up starting in the correct place i'm going to start with coastal storm which is sky four so this is the fourth one in that series and I'm just loading up my dauber here and I'm going to start by inking the middle and then I'm going to grab my next colour and I'm going to ink up a little bit more and I'm going to ink up my next one and I'm going to ink up a little bit more And I'm going to ink up my final one with that Sky One, the glass slipper. And then I'm going to stamp around, or ink up around the outside. And now I'm going to stamp that out. And sometimes you might need to go back in. So you can see there I missed a few different places. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to just do the whole thing again. And if it's a larger stamp, I'll work with two colours. So I'll start working with two, and I'm gonna work super quick with this one now that I've got them kind of primed with some ink. And what that means you can do is ombre effects. You can ink up different parts of an image with different things. And this one actually ended up moving my tag. So I'm gonna put my tag back in. I'm just gonna switch it around the other way, which might mean I need to stamp again. Um, but what I can do, and for this one, I'm just gonna blend And I'm going to go with my lightest. And this is great. And I love playing around with different ways to be able to add lots of colours to my inked images. So if, like me, you don't just maybe want a flat image or you don't have a layering stamp for that appropriate one, you can do it this way instead. And so you can see on this one, I'm going to stop now here, that I have loads and loads of different tones. Now really I need, I would go back if this was going to be a full project 
and I would go back into this centerpiece, probably with my second to lightest shade, and I would ink up all of my stamp apart from the outside. And the reason I'm going to do that, and I'm not sure if this is still in the same place now, but we'll hope that it's fairly close, um, is that that's going to start to blend out this tone here. So um, I can see there are certain areas that need a little bit more. And so you can build that colour up. And ombre is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do, but these daubers make it so much easier. I could do stripes, so I could do the rainbow, and I could go through the rainbow. I could do um, all sorts of fun techniques. If I'm doing a flower, I could do that solid piece, but I could add in just some flecks of other colours, so it wouldn't have to be all one colour of flower. So you can see how that's building up to become a really pretty ombre. I did it a little bit dark in the middle, but as I say, if I keep going back in with those lightest two shades on that central area, it will start to blend out some of those colours and you can build that up. And you can see on this side how we were starting to do that here. But another way we can do that is with the technique that I'm going to show you on today's project. So let's put these lids back on. Let's grab our Guiding Hydrangea set. And I'm just going to pop that stamp away and I'll give it a clean afterwards. Again, I'm going to grab another tag. So we're going to pop that in that corner there. And I'm going to start off by putting my solid piece on here. And I'm going to pick this up. So hydrangeas come kind of in two slash three colours. So they come in blue or pink and some will come in shades of lilac. And it actually depends on the colour of your soil as to the colour, uh, the pH of your soil, not the colour of your soil. It depends on the pH of the soil as to what colour of hydrangea you're going to get. Now, my grandparents used to have huge hydrangea bushes and they used to change the pH from bush to bush, which is how I know that you have to add these acidic and alkaline things in. And that is what alters the colour of your hydrangea. You can also now get some that have kind of been modified and whatnot to... Um, to other colours but they are the true colours but what I can do here so I started by putting my pink one on my piece here but what I can do is I can add some darker pieces so I went with the pink three and so you can see how I'm going to end up with some different areas in my stamp here and I'm going to put another stamp here of the pink one on And this is where a stamp platform really helps you to be able to layer these up. Then we're going to go with our second step. And I always have to work out what it is on this stamp. So you want the more solid one. And this one is easier to line up because it has these two pieces here that droop down. So what I do is pop this on. Make sure I have put it the right way up, I have. And you want to line it up. Now it's easiest, and I'm gonna line it up and then I'll show you. So it's easiest to rotate these so that um, what you want is if you put your head, and you're gonna have to excuse my head going in, if you look down on it, like really straight, you can see whether your stamp is in the right place or not. So I'm going to go with this and I'm going to hope that I roughly have it in the right place. I'm going in with my pink too and so you can see there I'm starting to build up those colours and these darker areas are going to look absolutely gorgeous by the time we're finished. Then we're going to go in with our next stamp and of course I now know that those two kind of droopy pieces go in the same place. The other thing, again, you want your head to be straight over it, that's really gonna make a difference, is once you have done the first one, you can then start to line up the next things and you can line up the centers. So I lined up these centers here. Again, I'm gonna now go with my pink three. Um, sometimes I skip 
the second one and I go in with the first, third and fourth. It really depends on how you colour your image, the image you're working with. Uh, when I worked with this up, this one here, this was one, three and four of the blues and then the outline is done in the hybrid black. So that's how I'm going to do this one just to show you how I built that up. This time we've done one, two and three but you can already see how these colours are coming together and those areas are kind of light and dark now look really pretty um, just to give you some texture in there. So now I'm going to go in with my outline. So this is my fourth stamp. Again, I'm going to suggest that you put your head over, so excuse the view of the back of my head. But again, I'm making sure that those centres are in the centre, lines are on the lines, etc. And I'm going to take my hybrid black. I like using the hybrid, as I mentioned in that previous video. I'll link that in that top right hand corner for you, so you can check that out. But again, this gives you a really nice way and you can use these tips with any inks it's just I really like how the scrubber dot cons are actually labeled one two three and four so I could have gone in with my pink four my Havana red and done my outline but I love the crispness that that black gives so again it's another option for you let's talk about the leaves you have three different leaves that build up your leaf in this particular set and of course everything is linked in that description for you as well so I'm going to pick these up so you can see how nicely they layer together and this for this one I'm going to use all of just the green shades so I'm going to start with green one and I'm going to grab a little bit of green two which I'm actually going to skip um, actually stamping something out with it I'm just going to use my Dorba I guess I can just grab another one here now, if I want it to be a little bit lighter, I can take some scrap paper or my glass mat, I'm just dotting at the top, and just around that edge, and I want it to be quite subtle, I'm just kind of tapping on those edges, and I'm going to stamp that out, and I need to go back in with my green one to that, some of those central areas, and I'm going to stamp out again. I'm going to take my green two, again just off to the edge, I've just put it down the centre this time just for a little bit of extra shading. Now I'm going to go in with my green three, again excuse my head, but you will, when you start doing these, you will realise A, how much the stamp tool helps you and B, how much putting your head directly on top makes a difference. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to go in with my green three, so I'm skipping that green two. And so I'm getting a little bit more shading in there. And then I'm going to go in with my green four with those final details. Again, you could go in with your black really depends what you want to do. There's also a pine that's a really nice deep green and that would also work really well for final details. And some of these Alter New stamps have more um, steps than others so it really depends which one you choose. But I've had this Hydrangea one for a while and I've used it so many times. It seems to work for so many occasions. It can be a happy card, it can be a sad card, it can be kind of whatever you need it to be which is why I like working with it. So you can see there I've got my nice leaf with all my details. I'll lift it up for you. So you can see that there's lots of variation in that but what I also love about these particular inks that not all inks have properties like this is I'm going to grab one of the sentiments that comes in this set let's go with the thanks and I'm going to put it over the top of my green and I want to do that because I want to show you how well even different colors interact and how nicely you can layer a sentiment over the top I'm also going to take another one of the sentiments here. I'm going to take the with. We're going to put that at the top. And I'm going to stamp that individually. So you'll see how crisp it is on its own. And then you're going to see how nicely it also layers over another. So I'm going to make sure my tag's in the corner in case I need to restamp. And these came out beautifully. 
So that width is lovely and lovely and crisp, you can see there. But then look how nicely it comes out over the top of another ink. Now some inks kind of gel together and all kind of go together. Um, but this one works really, really nicely together. So you can see there that with thanks. So um, I'm also going to add my tag ring for this hydrangea in. And I'm going to add this in. And I'm also going to point out where I made the mistake. I think it's important if you make a mistake on these tags, don't throw them away. Write what you did wrong and what you would do differently next time. I think you'll find that those kind of tips are super, super helpful. So I hope you enjoyed these tips with the scrapbook.com inks. I'm sure you'll see them popping up on the channel in future. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell as well so you get notifications of future videos, Inktoberfest and beyond. Um, I have a few more coming up. We have some Wendy Vecchi ones coming up. And I'm also going to talk about Gina K inks as well and do a review on those too. So lots and lots of things still to come. Don't forget to check out those links in the description and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. We will see you again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.